Hi, and welcome to another episode of Furuno Connections. I'm Clayton Pattison with Furuno Tech Support. And I'm Eric Kunz, Senior Product Manager. And today, our focus is going to be removing the old MFD-12 displays and replacing them with the new TZ Touch 2 15-inch displays. So, when we're removing these, what do we have to keep in mind while doing it? Well, with these MFD-12s, these Navnet 3D products, they uh, through-bolted from the front. So yeah. either you had a wood screw or you through-bolted into the console. But mm -hmm. one of the hardest part with these <laughs> MFD-12s was getting that <laughs> bezel off without breaking it. Yeah. And you really had to use the provided tool in the toolkit. Which nobody which ever Which hardly kept. anybody uses. They're nobody kept. <laughs> but this customer actually in this boat actually had it this has in the, the original packaging. He's got to be the one guy exactly, yeah. that actually ended up so, keeping that thing. Yeah, it's just this little aluminum L bracket and you use it as so. <laughs> and around the edges of the MFD are little indentations where you put yep. it in and kind of just crack it, crack it, crack it, crack it all the way. And you're basically just releasing the one um, yeah, they kind the, of the one plastic around. tong yeah, that goes around. Yeah, they snap around from the outside, so you got to get there and Boom. pull them off. If you do that carefully, it'll come right off, and I've already done it on this side. Okay. So you can see how I can just kind of pop this bezel off now. Okay. And the keypad, the rubber keypad will come with it. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then now I have access to the four screws, which yeah. I've already taken off. Once I do that, I've already removed all the wiring from the back. So you and don't have to pull all these guys out. No, no, There's no. not 50 yeah. screws yeah, to pull Yeah, this looks like off. a military box. These units were made were oh, all yeah. from the front. Yeah, so. they're not coming apart. Really nice. Anyway, that's, so that's it's out, just that's that easy. that's all it is. It's yeah. just that easy. Now, the TZT2 cutout pattern mm -hmm. is also rectangular, mm -hmm. but it's a little bit longer. So what okay. we'll have to do is t carefully tape that off, and I'm going to actually use a scroll saw to cut and widen this out a little bit to bring the MFD out and a little bit closer to the edge because they're just physically wider. Okay. A 30% display is not just about the, using more of the bezel because there's no keypad with this all touch, all glass dis design, but mm -hmm. it's also physically wider. So we have yeah. to come out about another half inch. No big deal. Okay. I'll do that slowly and take care of it. So here's a question. For those of you who may never have done this before, when you have to come in and open up a hole like this mm -hmm. to fit a large display, what do you need to keep in mind or what do you need to do to, to get the the whole cut out right. Well, what, how are you going to do You know, it? measure twice, cut once. Yeah. You know, that's the old adage that my grandfather told me when I was growing up. Yep. And it's, it, it holds true to this day. You know, grab, um, you know, you, we give you uh, dimensions in both millimeters and inches. And I prefer to use millimeters. I noticed when we started making stuff in-house inside Furuno, when we went over to millimeter measurements, we yeah. had less mistakes. Cut if out. you can fit the template over your existing cutout, mm -hmm. that's fine. In mm -hmm. this case, the cutout's almost the same size, so I'm actually just going to tape off in blue tape the actual measurement and the actual area where I'm okay, going to so cut. you're going to lay it out with what, a straight edge? Exactly, and I'm going to lay it out with a straight okay. edge, tape it, and then cut right to my lines mm -hmm. that I put Yeah, on just there. use the tape as your... Exactly, yeah. use the tape okay. as my guide, and then cut slowly with a scroll saw. Mm -hmm. So Clayton, I'm going to take this other display out using okay. that special tool, get rid of the bezel, remove it, Get it, lay out my tape lines and start okay. making my cuts. Okay, perfect. Right. Yeah. And while we're doing that, working here in our cold shop in the Pacific Northwest, trying not to cut our fingers off, we're going to take you over to Furuno's Tim Moore, who's in the Florida Keys right now with Captain Jack Carlson, whose boat is set up identical to how we're going to retrofit this one to give you a brief overview of the operational simplicity of the TZ Touch 2 system. Yeah. It's a pretty nice gig, the Keys, while we're here in the Northwest. Yeah, how did they yeah, get that job? Exactly. I'll trade. Hey guys, Tim Moore with Faruno, and today I'm here in Marathon, Florida to meet Captain Jack Carlson. Captain Jack is the owner of Two Conk Sport Fishing and a Faruno Pro Staff member. And Captain Jack has a fleet of yellowfin vessels all fully loaded with Furuno gear. And he's invited us down here to his place in Marathon to show us how he uses Furuno to get on the fish. How you doing, Jack? Doing great, man. Good to meet you. Nice to meet you. Can we get on board and see what you got? Absolutely, I'm ready. Okay, let's roll. Let's do it. Captain Jack, thanks again for inviting us down here. I gotta tell you, this new 36 Yellowfin is absolutely a gorgeous fishing machine. But before we get started, let's tell everybody what we have on board. So here at the lower helm, I see that you have two TZT L15Fs and I believe, I also remember you telling me you have not only a DFF 3D multi-beam sonar, but you also have a DFF 3 sounder. We sure do. And up top side, we have the X-Class radar 
and a TZT L12F. Does that sound about right? Absolutely right, man. And this is just one of seven vessels you have in your fleet, right? Absolutely. On all our vessels from our 17 footer, our 21, 26, 32s, 34s, 36, we got it all covered up with Furuno. So sounds like we got a lot of good stuff in store over the next two days. So let me ask you the most important question. How long does it take to get to the fishing grounds? We're fast, it'll be 12 minutes. That's what I like to hear. Let's do it. Let's go. So Jack, right now we're in about a hundred feet of water. And I know the, the depths vary around here, but what species of fish do you target and what depths do you usually find those species at? Well, one of our most popular spots is gonna be the Marathon Hump. That's gonna go from 700 feet of water all the way up to 500 and then drop off to 1,000. So we're fishing out there a lot. We'll catch blackfin tuna, amberjack, and queen snappers from top to bottom. My favorite screen on the TZT2 is the DFF 3D screen right here. This is gonna show you the wreck as we see it and the fish up top and all the way down below. And then with the triple beam here, you're gonna be able to tell which side the fish are actually on. Right now, you can see they're on the left side of the boat, right at 50 feet. That's gonna be your yellowtail snapper. Then on the main sounder, it's gonna show you right here where the wreck's passing, and this is where the, the yellowtail are on this side. Fish on, got him, got him! And one advantage we have with our Furuno units, you don't need a tower to get on these fish. I'm able to mark them on my screen and hook up every time. Wow, I gotta say I'm pretty impressed with how easy it was for Tim and Jack to catch fish so effectively with the TZ Touch 2 system. Now we're going to be checking back in with them periodically throughout the series to show you just how well this system that we're installing works out on the water. But for now, let's go back and check in with Eric and see how the console modifications are coming. I'm going to first take a regular saw, just a skinny little universal fine tooth saw, and square off the edges. Get these wires out of the way. I've also, we were also able to remove the mercury key switch and get it out of the way so I don't have any issue cutting here. But I'm going to actually take this and just kind of flatten it. Tools, it's pretty easy with hand tools it's easier not to make a mistake you just have to make sure you have a fine tooth blade as fine as possible so you don't chip the gel coat and then just kind of push on it and cut straight across Now the edge of this TZT14, you'll see that it's much, this is just a dummy display. The edge, you'll see, can fit in here, right up to the edge where we need to be. And then this cutout will allow it to drop right in. Only a little, about a millimeter or two vertical play from that MFD12, so it's really a perfect fit. Really not too much work. Now I'm gonna actually take, make a plunge cut with my grinder. You have to be careful here, but I'm gonna make a plunge cut and come and kind of come up and down right along this vertical edge because I can't get a skill saw in there. There's just no room against this thing. So I really have to be careful. I'm leaving the guard on just so I don't touch any gel coat by accident. So we finished cutting the holes or enlarging the existing holes from the MFD-12 so that the TZT-15L will fit in there, TZT-215L will fit in there. Um, I've checked all, everything's square. We've also uh, pre-installed the mounting sponge on the back of the display and the gel, cut, the gel coat is such a flat surface that we don't even need to use any silicone or any, uh, any kind of sealant. It's just gonna use the mounting sponge and then we'll secure these MFDs from the backside. That's the way these MFDs are designed. And there's a mounting kit for a flush mount kit that's included with these displays. And we'll show you how that's done from the backside. But right now we're just gonna drop them in. So this is basically ready to go. We'll start on 
starboard side. Things fit. Perfect. Dropped in perfect on that side. Nice and tight. And now let's do the port. Here, let me get that. Port one. All right, and the port display. This one also has the yeah. I've mounted I've put the gaskets on. on. That one's upside down. Mounted. So boom. And it looks good. It's all wiped down and clean. Mm -hmm. Those gaskets have a self-adhesive layer on the back. You peel yeah. the so there's one-sided sticky tape. Yep. So everything's in there. It looks good. We'll just pop these off just to see how it looks with the. See these off. You see, we uh, we come within about uh, three sixteenths of the edge of the mm -hmm. display right there, but everything fit and it looks perfect. This is what the flush mount brackets look like. It's basically a stainless steel bracket with a uh, bolt hole for the knob holes. So we've got small little bolts that are going to replace the the bracket knobs, and you've got two little indents on either side of the hole, which help lock in and center the bracket. Once you've got it bolted in place, you twist out the uh, the thumb screws here to tighten and push it against the dash to keep everything tight. It's pretty simple and straightforward. So we're going to put these on. Let's go in here and. Uh... So what we're going to do, um, if you can see what's going on here, here's the. This is the mounting flange for the for the uh, thumb knob. So the bracket goes in here and kind of locks into those two little detents on the side of the case. Just knocked it free. And then this guy. Get this in here. This, come on, get in the hole. This screws into the knob mounting hole, like so. And we'll tighten that up in a minute. And then once that's installed, then you can tighten the thumb screws to kind of put a little bit of pressure on the back side of the dash to keep the display sucked in tight. So you can see how good this looks. We removed the really old does. MFD 12 displays. Yep. I was able to square off the edges on the inside edge, but then I had to remove a little bit of material in the console on the outside edge. It's about 0 0.7, 0 0.75 inches, and push them out to the edge. But mm -hmm. you can see how it all looks pretty good. Yeah. Clayton, you got in there and you secured the MFDs from behind. Yep. We have the mounting sponge in there. Everything's tied up against the gel coat, mm -hmm. and it's all sealed and waterproof. So there's yep. no need to add any other, uh, you know, additional sealing or anything like yeah. that. No it silicone. really didn't take a whole lot either. No, it to wasn't that hard. Open the hole up. I used a combination of some uh, some power tools to make a plunge cut, mm -hmm. and then I used a handsaw to to square off the uh, and make the corners. Yeah, and I noticed it was a little well. tight up in these corners. It's a little too. tight, but everything fits, and it's yeah. really nice. It's, I didn't it's have, perfect. Yeah, mm -hmm. I didn't have to use, go uh, move the displays inside at all, so we left enough room. Room for the VHF radio and the new AM Perfect. FM, whatever deck we want to put Perfect. in. So that's all. So we're ready to go. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So stay tuned or tune in for our next episode. We're going to go up on the hardtop and we're going to pull down the original DRS antenna and we're going to put up the new NXT open array. So make sure to stay tuned. We'll see you next time. So thanks for watching. And if you like the exciting content that you've seen, Click the link below to like the video and subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you'll be the first one to know when we have new content available with new product information and new exciting stuff from Furano.